Hello, it's Sarah, and I am in the process here. I've already painted quite a bit on this uh, black tote bag. Um, but Nancy Vastin had asked, how do I get my circles to stay circles um, when I do it with a cap? Uh, best thing I can say is they don't always stay circles. But I definitely use a lot of paint. I, I really dunk this into a puddle of paint, not just a little like stamp pad of paint type thing, you know. And if it doesn't stay a circle, I go back, or I mean if it doesn't come out as round as I like, I do it again until I like it. And some of them I don't even mind if they're not all the way round um, and I think I'm even gonna do the other end of the cap but this one happens to be very flat I don't always use a completely flat meaning it it has rounded edges it rounds up a lot of the caps do um, even this one, this is pretty flat, but it still rounds up, but you get that, um, you get the circle pretty good. So now I'm just going to flip this over and I'm going to do some yellow circles too, like kind of next to. I had no plan when I did this bag, and I'm going to learn along the way. I got it uh, yesterday. At Michael's and it's a three pack I don't know why I chose black I think um, I may end up getting the regular canvas color too because I love the undertones of the black coming through I next time I'm gonna tape off the surface as well so that I can control where I put paint I like this. I'm going to probably come back and feather some black in along the edges to just clean it up a little. Um, but I did the same technique basically that I did with the uh, just the piece of duck cloth that I painted. I did the white first with the um, textile medium mixed in and then uh, started adding color. And this was pinks, blues, and a little bit of yellow and I'm going for a sky I think I'm gonna put clouds a couple clouds and some hearts dangling and that's it but this is really turning out um, what do I think like very pretty on its own I think I also want to go around those uh, put a little more black out the yellow ones with maybe I should do it no I'm gonna do black uh, I just use my palette knife and spread it to like be a little bit more of a flat surface so that I can take my cap and dip it in and I'm just gonna make circles around these yellow circles I just thought the background needed a little more black And I am pulling it. I intended to keep it closer, but I gr it grew, as does, you know, and it got bigger and bigger towards the edges. So I'm going to, I keep adding um, stamping out there, too. Did I get every, everything? Uh, that looks good. I like that. All right, I think I might stop my background and can, now I'm going to just draw on some clouds and paint them. I'll come back when it's done. But I think I'm going to also try... I applied um, my paint colors with a brush, this brush. But I was very loose with it and didn't um, control where I was going as much as I should have probably. Ugh, my paper towels are gross grungy. I'm gonna 
hopefully Does that look more, more, I don't know, I don't even know if it looks better that way, but I think I'm, I'm definitely, I didn't want it all the way up to the top. I have a piece of cardboard inside the bag um, with wax paper around it so that it uh, doesn't stick, the paint won't stick to the other side. So this is, I'm just, I think I'm neatening it up. Maybe I'm not neatening it up, but I think I'm trying to. That's what, that's my objective. I think it's kind of squaring it off a little better. Where it might have looked wilder. On camera it looks decent. Decent, not... I really went down much lower than I than I had intended. That than I had intended, um, because the bo the bottom's going to open up. Oh, you'd still see it though. So did that kind of neaten it up a little? Yeah. Next time, I definitely feel like I want to tape it off. And you could tape it into a heart shape. That would be kind of cool, right? And just do a mixed media heart. That would be awesome, actually. I really like that idea now that I think of it. That looks neater. I think I did it. Um, so I'm going to let this dry. And I think I'm going to put a couple clouds and have some hearts dangling. Maybe we'll see. Uh, I could do anything, but the background itself just looks pretty this way. So I'll be back. So I've sketched a couple of hearts and a couple of clouds, and I'm going to just paint them on. And uh, let's see. I could add, I'm going to add a little matte medium. Yeah, I am. Just because I want them to be sheer so that the background shows through and um, I'm going to shade them. So I think that's what I want to do. I'm just putting a little bit of matte medium in my brush and I'm painting these hearts pink. I used my Derwent water brush and the lines should just dissolve. Um, I didn't want to, I'm going to use my um, floating technique to shade so I didn't want them to be, I really love that though. Look how that, it's just so awesome like how that shading just happens when you use that um, it's a water-based, water-soluble, I'm sorry, water-soluble lead, I guess, right? And this can be sloppy. You know, I may end up outlining them with my Stabilo. I don't know. I may just do it with paint or a pen, some type of um, paint pen, maybe my... Um, oopsie, see look, when I turn it I put it in my palette. So there's four hearts. I should probably do five. I should probably put, I think I made them a little awkwardly placed. I placed them awkwardly, but no worries. We can always add something in. Like. I put a dangle here, um, but I'm just going to, I think I am going to add, see there's a cloud here, so let me go ahead and do my white, and maybe you'll be able to see where I'm going 
with the design. So I basically just rinsed my brush and loaded it with uh, matte medium. And I've got clouds that are kind of coming off the side. They're not full um, finished, I should say. They're not finished. They're kind of rough over there, so I don't know how that's going to look. Listen, this is just a... I just jumped right in. I didn't plan this out at all. I had no sketches or things to plan the design. I just thought I'd wing it. And it'll be fine. And... I actually have a cloud bumping into this cloud, which is cool. So, we'll see how that looks. I'm going to do um, shading and highlighting with color. And I'm going to shade around the outside with Payne's Gray. Oops, that was a little thick. I didn't dilute it there. kind of want to take some off. There we go. I just went into solid paint and I didn't uh, load my brush with the matte medium so it came out too opaque. I want these to kind of be see-through. Just to show the all that work that's underneath. So I'll finish these and I'll be right back. So I really didn't like the edges. It just bothered me. They were so not symmetrical. So I just went around it again. This time I did a straight line. I want to look at that now. I like that much better. Still, it's not perfect because I should have ended, I should have taped off to begin with and I wouldn't have had to deal with it. Like there's a little, there's a lot of black over there. I'll go around the edges and I'll fix that at the end. But I definitely like the crispness now of the line. Um, so I'm going to get out, I think I'm going to use Payne's Gray. Yeah, Payne's Gray. That's my go-to shading color, and it's basically just really going to make everything come off the background. And I'm going to use an angle brush. This is my um, favorite way to... Whoop, hold on here. Where's my good old... Those are like kind of more nice brushes. I want to use a little more of a rough brush, this one, because this is a rough surface. So this is a... 5 eighths inch I believe. This was my favorite brush and it's just getting so rough now. I need some uh, paper towels. So I'm just getting a couple because you have to blot the brush. Um, it's not as technique like intensive whatever because it is on a mixed media piece. This isn't going to be perfect. Um, but basically, I just want to go around everything. So I'm side loading my brush and working the paint into the bristles so that it graduates. I'm going to, I don't know if I'll be able to mop, but I just want to get my mop brush ready. Let's do, let's just go around these clouds. You can smudge it with your finger and take it off with a Q-tip if you really hate it. But the idea is to add dark color up against the clouds and then peter it peters out into, you know, it gets it gradually fades into the background. I think I'm stab accomplishing that. I'm going to go all the way around all of these clouds. 
I actually think I'm going to put this cloud in front of that cloud. So let's do that. I'll show you. You just um, right here. Oops. I put a lot of paint. That's me, babe. What can I tell you? I'm a heavy hand. I always put a lot of paint. It's kind of crooked. Sorry. I get a little too picky about it. So basically, now you see what's happening here. It's starting to make those pop off the, the background. And I just keep reloading my brush in the um, Payne's Gray. I'm going to do all of this with Payne's Gray. The whole back, all of the, the hearts too is what I'm trying to say. Um, everything that's on the background color. I turn my brush to get it to, oh, I need wet water. My brush was too dry. The, the, it won't move if there's no water in the brush. You need to have water in the brush for this technique. It's called floating, and the, the paint basically floats across the water. That's what I think. I'm going to add color to these clouds. I'm going to add a little bit of metal or actually pearl. Pearl white probably. Let's see, did I do all that? And um, some pearl pink. Maybe, maybe yellow because I have a lot of pink on here already. I'm going to do up here to get this guy to come forward. I don't know if there's, well obviously there is an alternative to this technique, um, but I've just never done any of that type of stuff like say use your pit pens, uh, your big brushes on fabric. I've never done it, but I, I think you could do it. I don't know if they'd smudge the same because it's a, a more, um, it's a rougher surface, but when we do mixed media, we make rough surfaces, right? So, um, give it a try if you don't float. So I'm going to go away and I'll do all that and then I'll come back and show you the next step. So to do the hearts, I basically did all the right sides first same technique loaded the brush and pulled some color and then I, I'm gonna go back and I went down the left side I just flipped the piece and take the color and stick it on the left side and I love how I should zoom in when I have a wet brush you can totally see the texture I'm gonna zoom in hopefully it'll I don't know how that's gonna dry but it looks so cool like let's try this one you can see the weave of the fabric. It's so cool. Can you see that? So that's just, I don't know, that stuff just makes me happy. I like to see that. And see how I turn my brush as well as the piece. <clears throat> and um, 
make it comfortable for myself. Oh, I'm over here now. I'm going to go back up a little. But I love, oopsie, I'm putting it in the paint. I love that I can see the, the fabric. That's just part of it, the mixed media of it, right? So I'm sticking the paint up against this side. And because this is sheer coats of paint, you can see all the underneath work that we that I did, not we. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys credit. Um, I ran out of paint, but I just... And then I went down the side as well. I need some more Payne's Gray. And by Payne's Gray, I mean it says Payne's Gray. This is Delta Americana. But it's like a... It's not gray at all to me. It's more of a blue, uh, a like <clears throat> purpley blue. It's really pretty. Really, really pretty. So I really have this loaded up with a lot of paint. I'm going to go down the side here. So I'm going to zoom back up so you can see what I'm doing. Whoopsie. I am now putting this along this edge. It's really hard because the fabric is so bumpy. But I want to add color along the edge like you would with um, when you're doing, when you ink the edges of your piece. This is kind of what that, what I'm doing there. I put way too much paint. But it's okay. I want it to look, I got it. I can take, I can take my mop kind of feather it out a little. But yeah, I like that. It's gonna it's gonna contain it better. I'm gonna go along the bottom. Try not to get the rest of the bag in my paint. Um yeah this'll this'll and then I could probably even do a line, like a piping line along it. I think that'll that will fix the problem. Um I love that that yellow dot it's under the pink and it's kind of looking orange see how it like changed orange isn't that cool but you can still see it that's what I love about doing these sheer coats and like all the stuff that's showing I wish I'd have done my clouds are a little bit um, opaque I wish they were a little less um, a little more sheer, I should say. Uh, so did I get everything? I think I went, I didn't go down this side. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to shade my hearts to give them a 3D look to them. To make them look like they're puffy hearts and not flat. So I think I went around the whole, oh, I didn't do the top either. I'm just making sure my brush is juicy, that I have a lot of moisture on it. And I'm putting it right, the color edge, right up against the, oops. I can brighten that back up, no problem. Um, with some lovely pearl paint. I think I accomplished what I was thinking though. I definitely feel like it it's more under control now. I don't I didn't like the way it looked so rough before. And I'll try to um, keep the color contained next time by taping off and then I'll just touch up if I uh, go out of the um, space. But I'm gonna get uh sorry, um, <laughs> talking and thinking. Alright, let's see. Ooh, I wanna use I think I'm going to use Mendicino. This is just a really bright, like, it's a red. Mendicino red. And I'm going to shade the left sides of all of my hearts. The same way I just did all the background shading, I'm just going to get water on my brush, corner load, and push the paint into the bristles. So this is such a pretty, it's like, it says red, but it's like a pink red. But it's not fuchsia, 
it's it's so pretty I love it I love 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 it you guys know color makes me happy so I'm gonna take that color and go all the way down this left side Man, I lost both of the both of those yellow circles. I didn't lose them, but I love when pink and yellow make orange and peach. It looks so pretty. Definitely got to add some metallic. I did use my uh, fluorescent pink, so there is some glitter and sparkle, but not a ton. And I'm I'm a little bit regretting these. Um, this was a new stamp that I made. I mean, I'm not regretting it, but I probably won't use it again on this particular style piece because this is a very flowy. I don't know that they just seem a little out of place to me. Um, and again, I I am not the judge and jury. I think everyone likes different things so that's got my the color came way too far to the other side of my brush all right do I have all my hearts so see it's starting to come together now I want to add some like I want to add I guess just I could do a really really light pink like this is my Martha Stewart white pearl, but I have a very light pink pearl. This. It's called Pink Taffeta. That would look pretty on the clouds. Just hit and miss, right? I'm going to do this on the highlighted side of the um, hearts. The Pink Taffeta Pearl. And I'm doing the same technique. I load my brush with water, corner load, and blend it into the brush. You can use a lot of this paint because, I mean, it doesn't matter because it's so sheer. And I love shine, so the more the better, if you ask me. I love it so much. And I'm just really hitting this side of the... I may put little um, things on the strings too, little shapes, kind of like uh, a zentangle or zendangle is what I'm trying to say. Um, we'll see how it goes. And I definitely will be outlining with, in some fashion, uh, probably just paint, maybe just a paintbrush. And this is kind of in the shaded area, so I don't want to put too much. I'll just do the center here. So that's pretty. I love shine. Um, I'm gonna just put a little pink on some of this, some of the clouds, as a reflection type color, right? I think that's enough and then I could put yellow yellow would look cool um, I think I'm gonna spatter at the end so I think yellow would look cool but I'm gonna go with the white I'm just gonna go with the I'm gonna pearl these up and I'll be right back 
So now I am basically outlining. I've just got some black paint. And I'm so glad I went and got this. This is a number one liner brush. It's by Simply Simmons. This is what um, Michaels is selling now. But it really can make a nice... I mean, I'm, I <laughs> overload my brush. I'm a heavy hand, so I have a lot of paint on here. And I'm going to add lines a little bit. I was outlining off camera and thought I'd just share that. Um, but that's basically it. I'm just going to outline now and do any details that I want to do. Uh, what do I want to do as far as details? I don't know. I kind of think it has enough going on already, right? I have so much crap on my desk. See how much paint this holds? It's so nice. And you get the paint nice and wet. Pretty much like the consistency of ink. And I've actually seen people paint with ink. They get their, um, <clears throat> whatever they're called, those inks, the acrylic inks and stuff. And just dip their brush in those and you're good to go. Uh, but I just watered down some black paint, some regular old craft paint, and it does the same thing. <clears throat> Sorry. A little fog. Alright, now I, put, I added a couple of hearts up in the, higher up in the sky. I just thought it needed something up there. So, I see how I had so much paint on my brush. And now I need to make <coughs> the um, the danglies, the hangers, right? So I have I have a mark on here with pencil, and I'm just eyeballing it. But it, it helps me if I turn the piece sideways. I can make a straight line that way. Uh, I should have started. I'm gonna do it this way because now this one has to go all the way. Let me just make sure this is going to be nice and last. Um, so I'm going to, I can eyeball it pretty good. Uh, well, you can even clean it up a little. But I might just put, I can touch it up with blue or something because I want to touch up that heart anyway. So again, I'm just eyeballing. And this one's going to go all the way from here. So... So this wasn't bad. I did this in a couple hours. I ended up uh, going over these black marks with the uh, metallic blue. And so you still see them, but they're kind of hidden. They're not as pronounced as they were. So did I get everything now? So everything's attached with a dangle. I still am not crazy about these edges. Like, I do kind of regret that I... But you know what? Maybe I'll outline it with white. I think I should. I think I should do something. I mean, it looks messy as it is. I have, um, still have some black paint out on my palette, but this still is just not, it's just bugging me so much that it's so messy. And so I do think I'm going to just do a, a thin line like I just did with the black. Just to kind of, I don't know, maybe add a little blue there too. Just to make it look more finished like the top looks totally messy right here. So how's that guys? It looks pretty good, right? I think, I don't know if I need to add anything else. You could add words. 
You could put dream somewhere. You know, make it your own. This was just easy. Something easy to put on there. Um, and I'm kind of exploring this whole painting on canvas thing like these bags but I mean I think it's cute as heck I have to do a line though it definitely needs it and I could put uh, some gold diamonds or some gold circles I think um, <clears throat> I could maybe outline with gold that's an idea I think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to use this thin brush. I'm going to use the... I like this... Um, what kind of paint is this? The Lemire. My desk is sorry. Um, this is metallic gold. And it is a fabric paint. So let's see if I can manage this. I'm, I'm still going to add some water to it. I wonder, I have a gold ink, but I think it's so sheer. This has, this is, this has opacity. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to try. I think this is going to be just what it needs. I should probably put um, the ruler down for a guideline just so I know where I'm going with it and don't go out of lines too bad like I just did but I think I'm going to do this even just touching the ruler I'll touch up the uh, where I went out of lines with the black but let's see what this does I think it's going to help, help me out a lot. Oh dear, I'm getting a little crazy now. Yeah, I like it. I'm going to go around the whole thing and I'll be back. Okay, it's done. I'm pretty happy with it actually. I'm going to take the cardboard out. It's just a, it happened to fit perfectly and I covered it with wax paper. Um, it's just a shipping envelope thing. So that's it. Can you see? I like it. The colors are so beautiful on the black. Um, there's a little bit of glitter, not tons. I could add some. I signed my name. Can you guys see? Yay! I did it in black first, but then I went over it with white because I never sign anything and I wanted to sign it. I love the gold outline because it definitely uh, needed something, you know. And I added more gold and I just made little gold diamonds. They're kind of big. I'm not actually very petite, am I? I put a circle on that one. I like it though. I think it turned out super cute for a tote bag. It's so happy. Alright you guys, that's it. Thanks for watching.